Hello and welcome to the latest episode of our charting and technical analysis course. I'm David Jones and in this video with Trading 212, this is um, really the first step of our charting and technical analysis course. Now, we're assuming no knowledge from this, so we're starting right from the basics. So whilst uh, some of you may know this, hopefully there's a bit in it uh, for everybody. So I thought what we do, go right back to the start and um, go through exactly how a chart's constructed, what are they showing us, and the different ways of representing uh, the price data. There are, there are three different ways, broadly speaking, I think that are popular uh, these days. So let's just start off first of all, uh, looking at these three different ways in theory, then take a look how it looks on the trading platform. Let's start off with our simple line chart. So all this does, it needs one price uh, per day or whatever time period you're looking at, and typically, if we're looking at a daily chart, for example, then the line chart is picking up on the closing price of the day. And that's, you know, if you're looking at longer term trends, it's a perfectly adequate way of looking at markets. You can get a feel for how the market is trending, any major turning points, such as down here. Um, but for, for many decades now, plenty of traders have wanted a bit more information than just uh, one price per day or one price per time period. So. I don't think the line chart is used that widely. So let's, let's take a look at the bar chart first of all. When it comes to the price of the market for any particular time period, whether it's 10 minutes, uh, hourly, daily, weekly, we have four bits of price information. So let, let's pretend we're looking at uh, where the market's traded on the day. We have, of course, the high for the day, how high it got, the low for the day, where the market opened, and where the market closed the day. So four bits of price information and this is how they get represented on a bar chart. Of course if you're looking uh, at it on a trading platform you know, you'll see bars like that, you'll still see uh, trends etc but you get a bit more information as to what was going on during the day. Don't forget with the line chart all we're seeing is that typically the closing price or you can choose the open or the high or the low but we only get one bit of price information so um, most traders want a bit more than that and that's why for many years, bar charts uh, were very widely used and still are, you know, even though I think in recent years, candlesticks have become more popular. So let, let's take a look at candlesticks. So when it comes to the data that it's showing, um, there's no difference between a candlestick and a bar chart. We still have the high, the low, the open and the close. The only difference is it's the difference between the open and the close that's considered important. So when we're looking at a candlestick chart and we're, um, we've got the data set out like this, the difference between the open and the close gets blocked in. So this is referred to as the body of the candle and the extremes are referred to as the shadows. Traditionally, when the market closes higher than it opens, so we have an up day, the candlestick gets colored in white and when the market closes lower than it opens, if we just reversed these two here, so we'll say the market opened up here, traded a bit higher, traded lower, but closes down here, then the candlestick would get coloured in black. But of course, you know, with trading platforms these days, you can set it uh, to whatever you want it to be. If you see, you know, a candlestick that maybe looks something like this, and we are going to do a session on candlestick patterns, this shows you there was quite a, a big swing during the day, but the close really didn't end up too far away from the open. So a very volatile day, uh, but the market settling not a million miles from where it started up. And just one last brief point on volume. Um, volume is, is difficult to get in some markets. You know, if you look at, for example, foreign exchange, it's quite difficult to know the official figures that were traded because so much of foreign exchange is an interbank uh, over the counter market. But if you're looking at um, something like an individual share, you'd often see volume at the bottom of the screen and it gets represented uh, something like this. We, we see volume bars. So again, if this was a daily chart we were looking at, we might see this at the bottom of the screen. And it gives us just a way of comparing, well, how is volume doing today? How much is traded today compared to maybe how much traded a week ago? So some people would use, for example, the idea of decreasing volume as a sign that, that maybe a current trend is under some pressure. But I think that's the, maybe one of the, the easiest ways of looking at how that volume gets represented on a chart. So a line chart is fine for getting a view of the bigger trend, but, but most traders 
when looking at shorter term movements, you know, for many decades used bar charts, and then probably from the mid 1990s, uh, the idea of candlestick charts uh, became popular. I think because it's a lot more visual, I think, than a simple bar chart. It's much easier to see which way was sentiment going on any one particular day. But just to see how it works in the real world, let's take a look on the trading platform and look at a real market with these three different types of display in the price data. Okay, so we're on the platform. Um, here's a market, the first market I brought up. It's as good as any. Here we go, it's the price of gold. And what we've got here, this is a daily chart going back to the end of 2016. What we're looking at, first of all, this is a line chart. And um, you can see it's, it's pretty obvious, you know, where we saw some ma major turning points for the price of gold, around about 11.87 through to the 12.10 area. And it's simple to see the overall trend. So there's, there's nothing wrong if we're trying to get just a feel for a market of taking a look at the line chart and maybe filtering out uh, some of that noise that happens during the day. Uh, down here, just briefly, you can see the volume, so the volume bars here. So we could see when the market was trading higher, volume was starting to drop off down here. The bars uh, are getting smaller and we can see the odd spikes in volume when we're looking at the price of gold. But let's flip this over and change this to a bar chart so we can see what extra information we're getting. So we'll go up to here and click on chart type for the drop down menu and choose bar. So we've zoomed this in to get a, a bit of a clearer look at what's going on. And you can see the bars here are actually colored. So if we have the close higher than the open, the bar gets colored in green. And if the close is lower than the open, then the, the bar gets colored in red. But you can see you know, the, the, extra, the extra data we're getting. So we're not just plotting the closing price. We're getting to see the high, the low, the open and the close. So let's just zoom this out, get a big, bigger picture. You can see we can st it's still very easy to see trends, uh, major turning points, but we just have that extra bit of information that we don't get with our line chart. We get to see the high, the low, the open, as well as the closing price. Let's change this to a candlestick chart. So we'll go back to chart type at the top, click on candlesticks, and again, just a couple of clicks to zoom in. And we can see there, so we have the same data, high, low, open, close that we have for a bar chart, but you can see the difference is it gets blocked in. So the difference between that open and the close gets blocked in on the candlestick chart. And we will be doing a session on candlestick patterns um, a bit further down this series, but that's just to highlight the difference between this and a bar and a line chart. I think another reason that, that bars and candlesticks uh, are important for traders is when it comes to setting things like stop losses, for example, um, it's maybe not too useful knowing just the close for the day. You know, people want to know, well, I want to set it beyond an extreme, beyond, beyond the low of today or the previous day or from a week ago or from 10 minutes ago. So with candlestick charts and bar charts, we get to see that. So those will be the charts that we'll be using uh, in the episodes to come. There'll be a whole session on candlestick charts because it's, um, it's almost an entire branch of charting all on its own. So we, we'll be looking at some popular uh, reversal and continuation patterns when it comes to candlestick charts. If you're not subscribed, you can click the button there to subscribe. And if you click the, on the alarm bell notification down there, you'll get automatically alerted when the, uh, the next video gets uploaded. If you like the video, click the thumbs up down below. And as usual, if you've got any questions, comments uh, about what we've covered in this video or anything you'd like us to cover in the future, just leave us a, a message down there in the comments and we do read all of them. But uh, for this week and for this session, until the next time round, uh, that's it from me, David Jones and Trading212, and I hope you have a good trading week.